here for the library district. I officially work for the whole district, although I am based here at a Penrose. Um, and that's because the Robert Hilbert Nonprofit Resource Center is also based here. And um, if you haven't been there before, I highly recommend it. It does close at five today. So if we are done, I can definitely, uh, before five, I can definitely walk folks over there and just um, show you that space. It is, um, it's for you guys. So if, um, if you haven't been over to the Carnegie section of the library, and I'm pointing this way because it's just up the stairs over there, um, it's been renovated and it is absolutely gorgeous. And it houses all of our um, rare, um, the, our special collections, there's maps, um, there's all our genealogy is over there. And also this one nonprofit resource room. And in the room, um, I've got a large collection of nonprofit titles. And those are all referenced, so they have to stay actually over in the Rob Hilbert room. But what I always tell people is if you do need, you know, one of the books that you see on the shelf, you let me know, and I can always help you out and find it for you, a circulating copy, or we get it through interlibrary loan or whatever. The only things that are over there that we can't um, get from another library are the salary and benefit studies that we have over there. So if you are needing any of those studies, I have them. Um, I also have, it's not over there because I think it's 800 pages long. And that's the one that Canda did this year. And so if you want that, let me know and I'll give you, I can email you a PDF of that um, salary and comp compensation study that they have. Um, we also have just a dedicated computer. Most people though bring in their own laptop. Um, we also have access to Foundation Directory Professional, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also from here, we have grants to individuals, and it's a really weird subscription that we have in that you either need to be here at Penrose or you need to be remote. You can't be at any of the other libraries <laughs> to access grants to individuals. Most of you, I don't think, are going to be interested in grants to individuals. That's really for those people who are looking for um, scholarships. If you're a musician, you're looking for, or you're looking for a fellowship, or you're an artist, those individuals that are looking for that type of um, resource, that's going to be grants to individuals. Now, with a library card, and we'll talk just a little bit about that. If you have a 400 level library card, and when I talk about 400 level library card, I'm talking about your library card starts with a number four as opposed to a number seven. And most of you, if you have a library card, you can be like, huh? But um, if you live here in El Paso County, more than likely your card starts with a number four. So you don't need to worry about that. So with a library card, you have remote access to Colorado Grants Guide. And we'll talk about it a little bit more. Data Axle. So if you are needing to do um, maybe some prospect research, Data Axle is the database you're going to go to. And that, you know, you can narrow down, you can use a heat map, you can put in by zip code, you can search for people. So like, say you have an animal nonprofit, you're trying to find people who regularly um, buy things for pets, you can narrow that down by that particular consumer. And also there's an option for, um, can't, I don't think it's philanthropy. I'm trying to think exactly how it's phrased. I would have to go into that database. But anyway, you can compile a list of people who may potentially give in your area of interest and in a specific region. So maybe you want to look at only people in the Broadmoor area, right? You can do that. And that's what prospect research is all about. And so we have access to Data Axle, which is used also by businesses. So like, hey, I want to put a new coffee shop. Where's the best place to put a coffee shop? 
where you can do a bunch of research and that's what um, folks do and they use data data axle. I think even Google uses data axle to get their information to put on their maps. So data data axle is huge. Um, we have access to the um, Gale Businesses nonprofit business plans, their plan builder. So I'm assuming all of you guys are really established nonprofits, but maybe you need to redo your business plan, or maybe you've never created a business plan. Um, the plan builder has a specific um, plan builder for businesses and then also for nonprofits. And when you go through the plan builder, it's gonna ask you like, and walk you through, uh, say like your bylaws, all that kind of information that you want to really have a well-run nonprofit organization. We also have access to LinkedIn Learning. And if you haven't used LinkedIn Learning before, but maybe you used lynda.com, LinkedIn bought lynda.com. So LinkedIn Learning has thousands upon thousands of videos. So I was just telling Courtney in our meeting, I'm like, hey, if you need to watch a video on how to do QuickBooks, <laughs> LinkedIn Learning has that. So there are, um, there's nonprofit videos. There's, there's videos on nonprofit management, like anything that you really need to learn how to do there's a video for that. And it's done by people who are experts in their fields. So a library I worked for quite a while ago, um, I had to have a license to be a librarian and we had to have a certain number of hours of continuing education every year. And my library was tiny and they couldn't afford to send me to places, but I used LinkedIn Learning and I was able to get my hours by using LinkedIn Learning. So a really important resource. And, and I'm gonna go through these things, but if at the end you want me to demonstrate some of these, I can definitely show you a little bit more about these different resources. So we definitely have time for that. <laughs> um, so I always offer workshops. And I think again, most of you guys are established but maybe you need a refresher on how to use foundation directory. I generally offer a class on that every few months. Um, Colorado Grants Guide, I offer classes on that. I bring in um, speakers. So I've got, um, I've got a woman, uh, Rebecca Rodriguez. She's uh, written a book uh, called uh, The Nonprofit Workbook. And she's going to be coming and she's going to be doing two workshops, two three hour workshops for me. Uh, one is for people who have never started a nonprofit before. The other one is if you already have an established nonprofit, but you want to grow it, you want to make sure it's strong. She's going to be talking about logic models, things like that. Um, these are free and you're um, welcome to sign up for those. Uh, it's October 23rd and 24th. Uh, for those of you who maybe don't know that we have maker spaces, we don't have them at this library, but we have maker spaces um, at 21C, at the East Library, at Sand Creek. And um, some people go, well, I'm just a nonprofit. I don't need a maker space. But maybe you want to put your logo on something. Maybe you want to laser engrave something. Think about really fantastic thank you gifts that you maybe want to give your donors, you could make them with the library. And I actually have sort of an example randomly on me. Um, the library is going to be bringing in a, uh, a display, or not a display, a uh, exhibit from the Holocaust mu um, Museum. And uh, I'm going to be a docent and so one of our other librarians made, um, made these really cool docent tags. So just think like if you wanna put your logo on something, you take a, a what's called a badging class on how to use our laser engraver, and then you can do something fun like that. So um, the exhibit's gonna be amazing by the way. So it's gonna be at the East Library in case you can see that they're expecting like 
at least 10,000 people to be coming to see this exhibit. Um, we also have sewing machines. I mean, you can you can see a list of um, of all the software that we have and the um, machine equipment that we have on our website. We have a studio, so maybe you want to do some sort of digital storytell digital storytelling for your nonprofit, and you want to put that on social media. We've got a studio at Library 21C, and um, you can go and do that. Green screen, all that kind of stuff. We've got experts that will help you, so you can go and do that if you want. And people that, oh, yeah, podcast. Yep, and so then, so, this, so the studio and the recording studio are in two different libraries. So um, the studio where you would do any type of camera work is at 21C. The recording studio is at Sand Creek. But yeah, so Sand Creek, you could do like my husband's really interested in doing a podcast and I keep pushing him to do it. But and I've contacted the individual who does the training and he would be all excited to have my husband come and do a podcast, but um, he's been slow to do that. But yeah, so we've got some folks that can help you if you want to um, do something like that. One year we had, well, that was a song was made for them. Yes. Yep, and inside I think, out services. So. Yeah, and I think that was actually done at our um, recording studio. And we've got all the spaces over in Manitou. Yes. And we're going to get to see them at the meet and greet next week. Yes. Please. So if you have a library card, you also get to use the Mac. And um, if you go to the meet and greet, you'll be able to see all the equipment and fun tools and incredible things that the Mac has. And since the library closed, um, is temporarily closed in Manitou Springs, we opened up in the Max space. And because we created that partnership, library card holders can use the Mac equipment for free. So, so the questions I get the most are about our grant seeking databases. And that's Colorado Grants Guide. And as I mentioned before, if you have a PPLD library card that starts with a number four, you can access that remotely. And Colorado Grants Guide is really fantastic. It's small because it is just Colorado-based foundations. And you, I don't, have any of you used Colorado Grants Guide before? Okay. So it used to look like it was, I don't know, built in 1992 or something. And they, they recently redid it. So it looks much nicer and it's much simpler to use. And I always suggest if you're gonna start looking into grant seeking databases, that Colorado Grants Guide is the first one you kind of dip your toe into and get the idea of how you search um, and how you search for funders and how you search for grants. And um, again, we can go into that in a little more detail if people want. The other one we have is the biggie and that's foundation directory professional. And that you have to be in house. So you don't have to be in the Rob Hilbert room. You can be anywhere. Um, in Penrose, I always joke, so long as you're on our Wi-Fi, you could be in our parking lot and you can do your, your grant um, research. Um, but the Rob Hilbert Room is, again, there for you. It's got plenty of space to spread out and do all your research. And as I mentioned before, I, if you've got your own device, I recommend doing that because it's much easier to save um, your information and your search results to your um, device. I've got on the table over there, I have kind of like quick get started guides for foundation directory and for Colorado Grants Guide. You're welcome to take any of the material over there. And with foundation directory, um, it's updated daily. Colorado Grants Guide is updated monthly. And with Colorado Grants, I mean, with Foundation Directory, I've helped people find grants 
not just here in Colorado, not just the United States, but I've, I've helped people find grants for their organizations internationally. So it really is, people always call it the Rolls Royce of grant seeking databases. It is really enormous. And because of that, it can get a little overwhelming. And um, that's why I tell people to start off with Colorado Grants Guide, get a firm idea of how you wanna search and then try foundation directory. And there's definitely some tips and tricks. And that's what I go over when I teach a class is really how to understand how to do a search so that you are creating the best search strategy possible. Grant seeking takes a lot of time. And I want you guys to be as efficient as possible when you are when you're searching. And that's just a cute picture of some wellness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, something I didn't mention is today, if you guys didn't know, is National Nonprofit Day. And um, I have a little display as you, if you head, as you head out the, um, right before you go up the stairs, um, I've got a display and I've, and I've got some little red hearts. And if you want to write your, who you want to thank as far as your favorite nonprofit, um, you can put that on my display for me. Um, and I've got a little bookmark that talks about National Nonprofit Day. So uh, I almost forgot about that. So happy National Nonprofit Day, everybody. Um, how many people use Libby? Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, so you know, uh, you know about Libby. Um, and you know, there's a lot of people that get confused about Overdrive and Libby and they've made some changes and all that sort of stuff. If any of you are confused, Overdrive, the Overdrive app has sunsetted. They just want you to use the Libby app. A couple of cool things with the Libby app though that you may not know is that Candid also has um, an Overdrive uh, option. And if you don't know what Candid is, they are a 501c3 themselves. They are the ones who run Foundation Directory and GuideStar. So once upon a time, it used to be the Foundation Center and it used to be GuideStar. They came together and are under the one umbrella organization of Candid. And um, Candid, allows you to create a free account with them and you can get a library card with Candid and add that to your Libby account. So you can have multiple library cards with Libby. And if you wanna play that game, which is what I do, you can get as many library cards from wherever add them all to one Libby account. And when you're searching for a title, it will pull from whichever library will get it to you the quickest or that has it. Candid, their books are almost all exclusively nonprofit in some way, nonprofit leadership, grant writing. Um, so I just did a screenshot of this. This is 16 nonprofit books for your summer reading list with at the top. What they try to do is get um, if they can purchase both an ebook and an um, e audio book. So if you're a, if you prefer audiobooks, um, you can generally find one through um, through them. So I highly recommend getting a library card with them. I have information on the table on how to create that account. I will tell you that if you have a Gmail account, it works a little better. For whatever reason, I have an uh, a Microsoft, you know, Outlook, and it didn't like my my email address, and so I contacted them, and they helped me um, with that. So um, make sure you add a candid um, library card. Uh, board source is another a uh, resource that's now available. And I have a little bit of information about that too. I don't know how long I'm gonna have that available, but I did purchase it for this year. 
So if you have ever like wanted more information about boards, board governance, and you end up on board sources website and then they're saying, you need to pay for this. I can provide you with a link and you can go create an account and you then have access to um, all the board source uh, information, you know, downloads and all that kind of stuff. So actually, I think that's that's all you need is boardsource.org slash PPLD and create an account. And then- Is it really focused on the role of uh, board and directors? Right? It's so everything board about boards, board leadership, yeah. board governance, all those questions. Um, not that any of you guys have a toxic board, but like, what do you do, you know, in those situations? What do you do with board, um, you know, with transition when you are getting, you know, a new ED, like all of that, they have so much information all about um, board governance. And so, um, yeah, you register, they send you a confirmation email, and then you can get into it. Is a lot on this slide. GuideStar Pro, so as I was saying, Candid um, came is in, includes foundation directory and includes GuideStar. GuideStar is, I think, the more and more I know about it and the more I talk to, say, like, corporate people who are in charge of corporate giving and and other people who are in in um, in charge of foundation giving they look at guidestar so if you haven't looked up guidestar before to see what your organization's profile looks like i highly recommend it because these foundations go and look at your profile on guidestar you do not have to pay for a GuideStar account, especially if you are claiming your GuideStar profile. Um, it, you then um, get access to their full suite of um, information when you uh, claim a profile. If you are just a regular Joe Schmo person, um, you can search a little bit on GuideStar, but not everything. GuideStar Pro is now available here at the library. And you get the full suite of resources when um, you're here. The important thing about um, claiming your profile and updating it is they, GuideStar gives you a seal of transparency. So there's different levels. It starts at bronze, it goes up to platinum. Um, and the more information you give them, the more transparent you are, the higher your seal. And you start appearing in more places. So you'll, you'll show up in Facebook. You'll show up um, in a lot of the donor advised funds. A lot of places where you didn't have a presence, you now will when you update your profile. Um, what they're also, the carrot they're dangling in front of people right now, two things. If you just claim your profile and you put the minimal information and that's the bronze level, they're now partnering with don uh, donation platforms and will give you Apple Pay if you um, claim your profile and get to the bronze level. And I have some information about that in the back. If you get a gold seal, they will give you one year of foundation directory essential for free. And foundation directory essential is not, again, not the full suite that you would get with professional, but it's still really great. You can still look up funders with um, foundation directory essential. So if it's too much of a hassle to come to the library to do some grant research, but you get a gold seal, you can do that remotely. I use it a lot when I have organizations who come to me and they're like, well, I'm trying to find somebody to partner with. 
or I want to know, you know, how many other people are doing similar work to me. I look at GuideStar because it lists every um, registered nonprofit in. Actually, I haven't looked outside of the United States, but it probably goes outside of the United States. Um, so people are always surprised when I show their profile to them and I say, this is what funders see when they look at your profile. And um, if you want to look at a really good profile, look at the Humane Society at the Pikes Peak region. They have a really amazing, like you look at their profile and you're like, oh yeah, I totally will give to them. Um, I always feel sorry when solicitors come to my door and they want me to give to their nonprofit and they go, well, you can give me your information, but I have to go check you out <laughs> and I will go look and it will tell you things like, oh, this person hasn't filed with the IRS they're delinquent, things like that, right? And that's information that you wanna know. There's other um, websites that you can look at to, to, you know, Charity Navigator, there's a couple others. But when I have talked to, I had a panel here um, the other month of um, uh, individuals who are involved in corporate sponsorship. They all said that they look at GuideStar before they decide to give, to sponsor an organization. So uh, I also have information about the, getting the foundation directory essential as well. So um, I think that's the main bit that I have, but I thought what I could do is um, go through a little bit, um, for you, unless anybody has any burning questions right now, I'll show you a little bit what Colorado Parents Guide looks like in Foundation Directory. So if, um, I guess I should go through this as well. So if you are on the library's homepage, when you click the research tab, you're going to see right here nonprofit resources. And that's the pages that I um, I organize and try to keep up to date as best as I can. And um, right here on the left hand side, you'll see my uh, link to nonprofit databases. You'll also see a link here to GuideStar and a link to Board Source. So if we go though to, and then I also have a I have other pages here too. So Social enterprise prospect research, right? So if we want to talk about data axle, we can go look at prospect research, fiscal sponsorship. Um, but let's first go to nonprofit databases. And what you have here is Colorado Grants Guide. And this PDF is what I have on the table. Um, same thing with foundation directory. And um, then there's a link down here to grants to individuals. So if we go to Colorado Grants Guide, if you are, um, if you're remote, then it's going to ask you, um, before you get to this point, it's going to ask you to put in your library card and pin. So with um, Colorado Grants Guide, you have a couple options. You can search for grants and you can just use natural language. I'm looking for grants that support libraries, right? I'm looking for funders that support libraries. You can also search here and it's gonna bring you results back for both grants and funders. I like to just do it myself. And I like to choose my search, um, my search filters. So you can go here to grants or you can go here to funders. And what's kind of cool, and this is what they did when they changed this. So it takes a, it takes a couple seconds. But what you see is application date deadlines. So right away, you know that there's an open grant and when that deadline is. And what you're looking at though right now is all the grants. 
right? So if you see, I don't know, there's a little bit here. Oh, right there. So you're seeing we're, we're viewing 30 of 536 grants. So those are all the grants that they have in their system. But I don't want to look at 536 grants, right? So you have options on the left to filter that. So you can put in the keyword. You've got these, um, each plus sign opens up a little bit more. So like, I come here all the time. I only want to see really new, you know, grants that were just updated in the last six months. What's also great is if any of you use a common grant application. So if you've already filled out the common grant application and you want to search for grants that use the common grant application, you can choose to filter by those grants that take the common grant, right? And so now suddenly I've reduced to 31 grants. So that's really handy. Now, Colorado, well, so this is CRC America. They're the ones that run Colorado Grants Guide. They're the ones that also put out um, the common grant applications. So that's the standard common grant application and the capital common grant application. And if you don't have access to that, this support right here, common grant forms right there. So that will give you um, those common grant um, applications. So if I keep going down, I can search by application date. So maybe I'm looking for a grant for my third quarter of my fiscal year, right? I could put in specific um, dates. And I really think the two, well, grant type. So most of the time, right, we're looking for project or program support, but maybe you are looking for capital, um, a capital grant, or maybe you're looking for general operating support. You can choose to filter that. So I have a lot of people right now looking for general operating support, and that put us to 221. That's still a lot of grants to go through, right? And so both Colorado Grants Guide and Foundation Directory, the two most important things that you always want to think about is where's the funding taking place in the last year? And that's the same here as in Foundation Directory. So we can say, I want to look Colorado State. Why? Obviously, well, unless you're Metro Denver, right? You could select Metro Denver. But you could also say county. So maybe I'm going to look for El Paso County. That now put me down to 13. And to me, 13 is a little bit more reasonable. But is this is still so this is geographic focus. This is not subject area. So then you have the option of area of interest. And um, it's just best if you kind of get used to learning what's in all of these. So, you know, like if you see this little carrot, it means that there's something more. Um, so I could look at that. I could choose libraries. I'm going to guess that I'm not going to get anything. Oh, look, there's two. So there's two capital grants out there in El Paso County, right? So it's telling me this up here, so I don't forget. So I asked for general operating support in El Paso uh, with libraries. And so I'm getting um, this one, except proposals year round. So maybe that's gonna be one that I'm gonna look at. And, when you select that um, option, then you get all the grant details. So it's going to give you a whole bunch of information, um, including who to contact. So that's that's um, how you search for grants. And if we were to switch over to funders, it's going to look um, pretty similar. Again, we wait. A few minutes while it's loading the funders. Um, and I said, why does it take so long? And they said, well, there's just so much information. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Um, so just a couple things about this real fast. 
um, when you see it's telling me inactive, and I was told that's because there's some people who like to go back and do historical research. Okay, I don't want to see that usually, so I can remove that. Again, though, we've got similar, right, geographic focus and area of interest. Otherwise, we just end up with a list, and it's all in alphabetical order. So we could definitely, you know, look into any of these. Um, and when we look at a funder profile, what we're going to get is... Um, when it was last updated, we can visit the funder's website, their social media. Um, it's going to give us a little different information than what the grant profile, right? Area of interest, their purpose, um, when they have grant opportunities, if there is anything, you know, restrictions. And this we could just go really quick and we could just jump to these different ones here. That's a quick navigation panel. Um, lots of restrictions. And then it also tells us who the past grantees were. So I like to, when I talk about this, I'd like to go, you know, is there another organization that does similar work to me that I see in this list? Because then right, past giving predicts future giving. So if somebody got something, an organization that does similar work to me, got a grant from them previously, Ooh, maybe that's a grant that's going to, you know, a found, foundation that's going to give my organization money. So some of these, like the bigger um, funders, you're going to see a lot of, um, a lot more past grantees. The smaller foundations, you may, it may be just a little bit, you know, one or two. You can find out find their financials, go to their 990, see who their leadership is, and then their contact information. So really simple idea of how to do Colorado Grants Guide. Um, and foundation directory, I'm not gonna go through this one just because it's, um, it, there's so much to it, just, I usually do again their advanced search, and you just have so many more options. And if anybody ever really wants to see what all the options are, you can look at their classification system. So, this is how Foundation Directory is set up. So if you want to see what their subject categories are, sometimes I tell people this is a great way to kind of brainstorm and see maybe how I should put a search together. You can start looking at to find out, you know, what does your organization do, right? Are you in the environment? But every time this opens up into more and more. So Colorado Grants Guide had like just that tiny little amount Whereas foundation directory, it's like that on steroids, how many options you have. Both Colorado Grants Guide and foundation directory do have keywords. So if you can't find what you're looking for, you could always try a keyword search. So um, I would just say, I, again, I don't want, I want, I said past giving predicts future giving, but I really don't want data all the way back to 2003, I usually go about five years. So, you know, you can change that. Um, and you can also just start typing in too. If I just start typing in Colorado, I get my options. So if I wanna search Colorado statewide, if I wanna search by congressional district, do I wanna search by county? Do I wanna search by city? I have all those options. So every single one of these gives me a, just a myriad of different ways to search. And when you are searching, it's just really important to remember you're going to try, you're going to try again, and you're going to try again, and you're going to try again. Each time you create a new search strategy, you're going to get different results. 
and you're going to learn how, what best what, what is the best way to find those grants that are unique for your organization right what is your mission and vision what is your purpose and that's what you're doing um so that's so that's foundation directory yeah uh, you know what i just do just just google um candid taxonomy but okay. here it's it's okay okay taxonomy.candid.org okay perfect thank you yeah um and it goes through each of, of their um each of their search uh boxes has this and what's actually kind of neat is if you don't say you wonder really what they mean by um I don't know environmental justice it will give you the description of what they specifically mean by that term so I've been trying to find grants of forgive and um, it can be tough because give is very unique. And so as I'm going through, I'm like, is that really us? What does that actually mean? And so I use the term information all the time, actually. They used to give this as a handout, but very smart. They have made it into this interactive um, website. And they are also, they change things a little bit. They're trying to always make um, their search terms as inclusive as possible. So every once in a while they go through and they change things. Any other questions about Foundation Directory? Um, GuideStar, again, that is here. If you want to look at GuideStar Pro, you want to do some research, you have to be here um, at the library. And um, I'm just going to um, so here we see here's the Humane Society. We can see that they're platinum. And um, when we click on them, we see their profile. And so this is all nicely filled in. We get to see what their programs are. Um, we've got some great videos that we can watch. All of this information is they have here. And so if I am a funder and I see all this information, I think this is an organization I want to give to. Um, you can also um, search. So I could just say Colorado. There are 57,000 nonprofits in Colorado. If we look at El Paso, there are six thousand over six thousand nonprofits in El Paso. This is also including faith-based organizations as well. But what I like when I talk about how many nonprofits we're looking for grants again, right? The pool of money is 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 finite. Who, who's your competition? Who are you up against with um, finding, you know, for wanting funding? There's over 6,000 nonprofits here in this county. Um, and so you can, again, you can um, dig a little deeper and find more information. Um, <clears throat> let's see. These are all people who are at the top because they, that's impressive. These are all ones that all have claimed their profile. Oh, I just passed by Gib. Okay, so this these are organizations that have not um, claimed their profiles. 
and there's just not a whole lot of information about them. So, um, you know, if I, oh, there's the place, but, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I have no idea what that is. Some of these old English sheepdog rescue of Colorado. Um, there's just not a lot of information. It's also telling me ooh, that, that there's some issues with the IRS with them. Um, I don't have anything. I don't know what their mission is. I don't know anything about their programs. Nothing. So, so if that was yours, how do you claim it? Oh, right here. This profile okay. update okay. now. Right is this your nonprofit update now? Okay. okay. Make it clear. Yep, they make it really clear. Okay. So you don't want to look like this. You want to look like the human society, right? For anybody that comes. So when you claim it, what are the checks and balances to make sure that you are who should be claiming? They do some research. Okay. So like you can't just not anybody can, can go in and claim your profile. Um, they have to, you go in and you tell them that this is your profile and then they get back to you. It's it's a conversation back and forth with, with GuideStar themselves to make sure that you are who you say you are. Um, so that's a good, good question, but yeah. Um, so that's GuideStar, Board Source again. Um, Board Source does a lot. So if you really, if you're needing some assistance on any aspect of board governance, I would say Board Source is, is your place. And um, that, that initial link that was up on screen, or I have it um, back there. Or you can contact me. That's how you can get your member claim your membership for board source. Um, and then last, um, let me go into um, I don't have it. Actually, I do have it, but let's go into all databases. So if you ever forget, so like yes, my page has the databases. But if you forget how to get to my page, the all databases page has every single database that the library has. So if you're looking for LinkedIn, you can come here and um, uh, it will ask you to create an account. Mm -hmm. oh. God, I do this every time. And you know what? I asked him to change it. It has to be one, one word. And I told him, I said, a lot of people put in links that space in. And he said, oh, I'll change that. So it says formerlylinda.com. Um, and, you know, it'll ask you, um, well, it'll ask you for your library card number. I'm also, I work with the vendor. So my email address is in there. But, um, you know, it'll go through, I'll show you. Um, it'll go through and you have all kinds of options. So um, a lot of people think it's just businesses, but if I say, Nonprofit. Right away, I have eight courses for nonprofit management, um, nonprofit accounting. So, um, you know, you could go through these and see what type of um, courses maybe are here, but maybe it's not even um, nonprofit management. Maybe it's uh, video editing, or maybe it's photography, maybe it's something different like that you need um, to help you with, again, your digital storytelling or an event that you're holding. LinkedIn Learning is a fantastic place to find those um, courses. Some are courses and some are videos. So when you see a course, then it's going to be multiple 
like classes um, that you that you can do. And if you have, you know, if you are a larger organization and you have employees, then you can send them to LinkedIn. Hey, this is Jennifer. I just missed a call from you guys. Hey. And yes. And then it used to be called um, Correct. That is correct. Reference USA. Okay. Now it's called Data Axle. Which yeah. I just had an email today from somebody who said, I can't find Reference USA. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's because it's Data Axle. So there's some videos and tutorials for yeah. um, Data Axle. But if we look at uh, US consumers and lifestyles and um, do an advanced search, Again, this, this I'm not going to go through this because this is, gets complicated, but you have a lot of options. Again, who do you want to who who do you want to prospect for? Who is that type of individual? And these are um, you have a, a lot more than what you see here because it again it kind of opens up and opens up. So um, that's another really good resource that a lot of people, a lot of people use. And I think that's it. A lot of, a lot of stuff. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. So. so when I started getting that, that was very useful. Okay. I not really want to see the <laughs> I can go up there and then yes, go through step by step. And um, like I said, you know, check and see if I have a class. And if my classes don't work for you, you just let me know. I'm always happy to work with you one on one. Or if you say want to set up something specifically for yourself and um, other individuals that are part of your organization or volunteers, I can always set that up as well. You mentioned uh, there's there's a video editing classes, right? Like if we have footage and we want to put together a promotion video or something like that, like uh, Final Cut Pro or something on. I think we do have those. That's going to be with our makerspace okay. folks, okay. and we have the software. I know for a fact Library Twenty One C has like Mac computers with that software okay. um, and so you can go there and there are staff who know how to use that software. But um, there's no cameras for like my professional. There are some cameras. Sorry, this is fine. No, 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 no that's, that I was just like, that's just like whatever you guys are looking for. Um, So I just went to, I don't know, I did that really fast. Yes. Yeah. Um, so let me go back step, sorry. Okay, so here under services, we have, well, there's maker spaces. So you can always look there, but our library of things. So this is gonna be different than what you're gonna see in our email, our catalog of, of books and, and videos and whatnot. Um, you know, like we have board games. But coming down here, we have video, audio, and photography equipment. Um, and so this is what we have available for checkout. So we have like, we have GoPros um, and I don't know what all these are, <laughs> but we have these things. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Right. So, um, and then it always like you have to reserve it. You have to sign a loan agreement for these mm -hmm. um, other ones. And then, um, oh, we're into. Um, so if we go to equipment, and then makerspace, right? Three D printers, sewing machines, die cuts, three um, D. 
uh, scanners, button makers. Maybe you guys want to make some buttons, right? Button makers. We've got conversion machines. My husband's always like, we've got these old VHS. He said, I learned because somebody called the other day and asked about it. You have a VHS that you want to convert to digital. It's a one to one. So if you're, if you're, um, VHS is an hour long. It's going to take an hour. Oh, that's, that's good to know. It takes a really long time. And then also like the Mac equipment. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these are so fun. And I just keep thinking, right? Nonprofits, we, we want, yeah. we're always like in competition about who can make the best thank you gift, right? Go to the library and make some really cool, you know, is the Mac equipment also in the other categories or is it all just together? Um, the Mac is definitely different. And when you look at that, this kind of shoots you over to the Mac themselves. So they've got all these other um, options that we don't have at all. And you have to go to them and do their badging um, that, that they require or whatever classes that they require before you use their equipment. But I think it's like it's generally pretty expensive to be a Mac member. Um, and you get to use it for free in the library. So and I think I'm really excited for the meet and greet because I want to see the space. See the space. It's cool. Because I haven't been over there and I'm I, I'm, I'm bummed I have. Um, any other questions about? How does one get a library card if they don't have one? Good question. <laughs> um, you can just walk right up to the desk as you leave. And so long as you have a picture ID with your current address, yep. if you don't have your current address, then we need like a piece of mail or yep. you know, car insurance, whatever. Um, it's really so easy. It's very, very easy. Um, and cards do expire every three years, but it doesn't mean that you kicked out of the system. It just means that you need to renew your card. And it just means we ask you like, hey, is your address still right? Do you still have this email address? That type of stuff, because we are such a transient population here that we like to make sure that everybody's information is up to date. So anything else? A lot of information. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've got some slides. I've just sat up there for a couple of hours. Yeah, you have to really listen to the public research.